Um, I, I, you know, I didn't allow myself to see the clues that I was gay until I was, I don't know, 15 or 16. And for a while, you know, I had problems with it. And then I went to college. And then I was surrounded by people who didn't have a problem with it. So that was nice. Um, I, I met a writer who had written several books about being gay and coming out. And he, he advised all of us that if your parents were paying for your college education, maybe wait to come out to them until after they'd, they'd done paying. So I did that. I let them pay for everything. And then um, I, I came out to my mother, my father, my sister all on the same day. I didn't mean to do it all on the same day. And it ha just happened that way. I, was, um, I went to a gay church and someone was having people over for Christmas dinner. And I went somewhere like near Valencia, and I got to the neighborhood, realized I didn't have the address, and I just saw this row of pink houses that were all identical to each other, except they each had a different number on them. So what could I do? I called my mom, and I said, do you see the directions, the address anywhere? And she said no. And so I said, go into my room, into my nightstand, and there's a directory there for this church. And I thought, my mom's really smart. She's gonna notice that every time that there are two names together at an address, they're all either both female names or both male names. So I was convinced she knew. I got home late that night, I went to bed the next morning. Um, you know, I was just trying to figure her out, figure out what she knew. And she was very cagey and didn't let on anything. So finally I just started crying. <laughs> I just broke down in tears and I said, I'm gay. And uh, that did not go over well. My, my, my mom is a born-again Christian. She went to the seminary. Um, so she, the first thing out of her mouth was, get out. You have to leave. You can't leave here. Um, and that was upsetting. But then my dad came home and he said, you can stay. And um, surprisingly, my dad has been very, very, very cool. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of this uh, acting teacher called Sanford Meisner, but it was like a Meisner exercise. My dad's line was, I know you think you're gay, but do you allow for the possibility that maybe someday you'll change? And my line was, well, I suppose anything is possible in the world, but I really doubt I'm going to change. And then his line was, yes, I know you think you're not going to change, but you know, we just went back and forth saying exactly the same thing to each other. And finally he broke me down and I said, okay, fine, you know, it's possible. Change is possible. Um, and then later on that night I saw my sister and by that time I was like, hey, I'm gay. <laughs> That's pretty much it. My dad was really hoping that I would change. Um, and, then, and then like these boys that lived across the street, they were in a, a car accident. Someone, a drunk driver hit them and um, the, the kid that was you know, just a few young, years younger than me died and his friend who was about the same age died. And then his little brother who was even younger, he, like, he was seriously injured but lived. And I think when that happened, my dad, he really got it. He was like, okay, um, my son's a fag, but he's a nice kid and he's a good person and, and it's great that he's alive and such a great person and I'm irritated that he's a homosexual, but I'm going to live with it. And he's been so great. And, and then, like, when I, I don't know, my dad just gave me, like, the best, warmest hug ever that day. It was just, yeah. Best hug I've ever had.